Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Shannon Anderson and I am the pastor at Peace Lutheran Church in Waldorf, Maryland. And I am glad that you have joined us this morning. So this morning before I started recording worship, I had to stop by the church to pick up this, my, my green stole. We've moved into the season of ordinary time and the color is green. And of course, uh, this stole was still at church just like two weeks ago, my red stole Pentecost was still at church just like eight weeks before that my white Easter stole was still at church when uh, we left the sanctuary on March 7th it was the season of Lent and none of us then could have imagined that today we'd be here and by here I mean still out of the sanctuary by here I mean still in the midst of this pandemic by here I mean two and a half weeks after the murder of George Floyd. By here, I mean in this time of great unrest as we as a country come to terms with the racism that has plagued us. And by here, I mean all of the unexpected places that we find ourselves in, both, both globally and communally and individually because of these times. We never thought we'd be here but we are here. And I want to tell you this today, God is also here. We are not alone in the midst of this. In fact, if you're listening to this today, I want you to know that uh, God has not abandoned you. In fact, God has called you for just this time to be a witness to God's love and to the power of God's work in the world and God will give you what you need in order to be that witness. And so I am glad that you are here and that we can, even though separate, be that witness together. We begin worship this morning and every Sunday during this season with an opportunity for confession. We come to God admitting that we mess up, that we don't get it right. But when we do that, we can trust that God hears, God forgives, and God helps us to move past our past mistakes so they don't have to weigh us down. Please join me in confession. Your responses will be on the screen. Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be human. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all that we have often because we do not fully understand what loving means or because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other. We erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess by sil that by silences and by ill-considered words, we have built up walls of prejudice. We confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us to listen to your words of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment and free us from our sin. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours now and forever. Amen.
Now is the moment of grace. This is the hour of blessing. Today is the day of salvation. Here is a path to new life. Already joy is abounding and love is flowing. For this is the day God is making. Let us rejoice and sing. into our hearts so that overflowing with joy we, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew from the 9th and the 10th chapters. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. 
You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, from Christ our Savior, and from the Spirit, who is God's presence in our midst. It is the sixth month of the first year in the third decade of the 21st century after the reports of Jesus' resurrection changed the course of history. It is also the third month of the global pandemic, four months after the murder of Ahmad Arbery, three months after the death of Breonna Taylor, and two weeks after the murder of George Floyd sparked a national uprising. Wednesday, June 17th, is the fifth anniversary of the shooting of nine black churchgoers at Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Friday the 12th was the fourth anniversary of the Pulse Massacre, where 49 members of the LGBTQ community were murdered. Friday was also Loving Day. In the midst of this crazy world that we find ourselves in right now, on Friday, my news feed filled up briefly with pictures of happy couples celebrating the 1967 Supreme Court decision, Virginia versus Loving, which struck down as unconstitutional states' bans on interracial marriage. As I looked at the beautiful pictures of couples on their wedding day, posted in remembrance of the couple who struggle had made their marriage possible. I was reminded visibly and powerfully that the struggles of today have the power to shape future generations. May our work and our struggle in this unprecedented time bring joy to our children and to our children's children. In today's gospel lesson, it says that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. In the world of the Bible, shepherds were a common image of leadership. Sheep don't do very well on their own. They get themselves into places that they can't get out of. They don't know how to find safe grazing. They are vulnerable to prey. Sheep without a shepherd are sheep that are in trouble. Occupied by the Romans, political leadership in Palestine in Jesus' time was interested in three things, preserving order, maintaining trade routes, and collecting taxes. There was no shepherding for the common good that was going on. And the religious leaders in Jerusalem were either too concerned with making political compromises to maintain a status quo or 
with arguing about what it meant to get religion right, to be of much help to the people who were struggling to get by day to day, sheep without a shepherd. It was a difficult time and an uncertain time, and Jesus saw the pain of it and had compassion. And so he calls his disciples, he calls them, and he sends them out. And he doesn't send them out to be shepherds. Did you notice that? He doesn't send them out to solve the world's problems. He sends them out to heal, to bind up the brokenhearted, to cure the sick. He sends them out to tend to those who are wounded by life. He sends them out carrying his compassion with them. And in the same way, he sends us out today. We don't have to solve everything. We don't have to change the world on our own, but we are called to be agents of compassion and witnesses to God's love in this difficult time. And there is power in that for the world and for us. In his book, Tokens of Trust, An Introduction to Christian Belief, former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, tells the story of a young Jewish woman named Eddie Hillisum. Eddie was in her 20s when the Germans occupied Holland. She wasn't at that time what you would call a religious person. But between the years of 1941 and 43, as she watched her world descend into nightmare, she also became deeply aware of God's hand on her life. Imprisoned in the transit camp at Westerbrook before being shipped to the gas chambers, she wrote in her journal, there must be someone to live through it all and to bear witness to the fact that God lived, even in these times. There must be someone. And why should not I be that witness? Why should not I be that witness? Williams describes Hillison's commitment in this way. She decided to occupy a certain place in the world a place where others could somehow connect with God through her. She took responsibility for making God credible in the world. She took responsibility for God's believability. The author, Debbie Thomas, says, to make God believable here and now is to stand in the white-hot center of the world's plane not just to glance in the general direction of suffering and injustice and then to slide away, but to dwell there, to identify ourselves wholly with those who are aching, weeping, and dying. In the case of America's longstanding racial crisis, making Christ credible means moving beyond denial, beyond willful ignorance, and beyond the Band-Aid approach of thoughts and prayers. It means deciding that we individually and collectively will not tolerate the demon of racism for one more generation. It's a tall order to be a witness in these times. But Debbie Thomas says that Jesus asks so much of us because he has given us so much. You received without payment, without cause. Now give without payment, Jesus tells his disciples. And Thomas says, maybe if we can put aside our reluctance and our fear, we will feel the weight and the power and even the glory of our calling in this time. Jesus calls us only to be what we were actually created to be. Jesus knows that the cure for our own brokenness, our malaise, our boredom, and our angst, he knows that when we go out into the world in his name, healing what is diseased, resurrecting what is dead, and casting out what is evil. When we do that, we participate in the transformation of our own souls. Siblings, the pain that we are hearing these days is the very heart of God, the compassion of God crying out on behalf of a world desperate for justice, desperate for hope desperate for mercy. Someone has to live and bear witness to the fact that 
God lived, even in these times. So ask yourself today, why shouldn't that witness be me? Amen. Together with the Church Catholic, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us join together to pray for the Church, our nation, and for all who are in need, responding to each petition with the words, Graciously hear our prayer. O God, the Holy One of Blessing, send your spirit of tender might throughout your Church and to all its leaders, especially our bishops Elizabeth and Layla. Strengthen the believers who cannot assemble for worship. Guide the church's use of technology and make yourself known to those who have no access to such materials. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, the Holy One of Truth, as today we commemorate the 4th century theologians Basil the Great, Gregory of Nazianzus, and Gregory of Nyssa, and Marciana, we pray for your spirit on teachers, preachers, and missionaries. Empower the Church as it uses both historic and innovative words to proclaim your gospel across the street and around the globe. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of creation, continue your care for the earth. Where there was fire or flooding, drought or storm, bring renewal of the land. Bless farmers and ranchers and protect migrant farm workers as they toil in the sun to harvest our food. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of Unity, as we commemorate this week the martyrdom of the Emmanuel Nine who in 2015 were killed while assembled in their Charleston church for Bible study, we pray. End the scourge of racism and white supremacy. Protect protesters. Halt those who intend violence. Preserve our democracy. Raise up leaders who model repentance and reconciliation and support legislators who seek justice in our land. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of Compassion, 
Heal the sick and embrace the fearful. Visit the millions who are suffering from the coronavirus. Protect us from another wave of disease. Uphold healthcare workers and medical researchers as they work on our behalf. Assist the unemployed in finding a job. Show us how to provide safe housing and daily food for the homeless in our nation around the world. We pray also for those we name here aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of hope, sustain those who cannot endure the suffering, but are led only to despair. Pour your grace into their hearts. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of mercy, we pray finally also for ourselves. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O oh God, Holy Eternal One, we praise you for the lives of all the faithful departed, both the famous and the forgotten. At the end of all things, bring to yourself all your treasured people to abide in your presence forever. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those desires too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. At this time, while we cannot be physically close to one another, we can be relationally close through the gift of technology. We invite you to pass the peace with your church family and loved ones by taking a moment to text or call people and let them know you are thinking about them. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. We long for the day when we will be gathered at your table, sharing again the gifts of bread and wine, your body and blood poured out for us. In this time when we are apart, we trust in the grace that comes to us through the gift of your word. May this grace strengthen our bonds and open our hearts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love and be agents of your reconciling justice in this place and in this world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, not powers, not heights, not depths, not anything in all creation 
will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. We were glad to be together, even though we are divided across space in this time. Before we go, just a couple of quick announcements. I am excited to share that our relaunch team is beginning to plan some outdoor worship opportunities. Our first one will be July 12th outside at church at 8.30 in the morning. And uh, you are invited to join us for that. We're asking uh, families to bring their own chairs if you can. And we are working all the logistics so that we can stay, stay physically distanced and so that we can receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. Please know that we will also have an online worship service that day for those of you who are safer at home. Also, I want to remind you that on June 27th at 11 a.m., we will hold a congregational meeting via Zoom, and uh, this will be at right after the worship at 11. We'll send out the Zoom information ahead of time. We'll also send out uh, via video a brief financial update that you can watch ahead of time, so you can come with that already if you'd like, and we'll give you some updates on how we are faring in this time, and also on how our relaunch, relaunch plans are coming along. So we hope that you will join us for that and bring your questions. Thank you and I hope you have a great week.